Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, praise be to the Heavenly Father. Don't it feel good to be alive? <laughs> Man. Sometimes we think life is so hard. You got to understand, somebody didn't wake up today. Somebody's struggling for their life right now. All oh, praise be to the Heavenly Father. It's good to see each and every one of y'all. We got some visitors in the house, huh? How you doing, sis? How y'all doing? It's good to have that whole row, huh? How y'all doing? All praises, all praises. Sister right there, what's going on, Nick? How you doing? All praises. Good to have y'all in the house. How you doing, sis? Indeed, indeed. And then just, just everybody else is here, man. All of the faces, this man can't ever take for granted just being able to see one another, man, That's and right. being able to, yeah, all praises. What's going on, Elder? See you in the house. It was good to see you. Indeed. You too, Elder. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All praises. Y'all ready? Man, there's a lot going on in the world right now. Some uh, World War III might have kicked off. You know that, right? All praise be to the Heavenly Father, though. Indeed. Hey, let's check out something real quick. Go to uh, 2 Timothy real quick. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter three. Let's start at verse one. The book of Second Timothy, chapter three. Uh huh. Verse one. Yep, yep. This know also. This know also. Know this also. Go ahead. That in the last days perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come. <laughs> perilous times. Read. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Safe to say that's happening. Covetous. Go ahead. Boasters. That's happening, Read. Proud. Go ahead. Blasphemers. That's happening, Read. Disobedient to parents. Oh, that's happening a whole lot. Go ahead. Unthankful. That as well. Unholy. Absolutely, go ahead. Without natural Ooh, affection. Without natural affection. Go ahead and read. Truce breakers. Uh -huh. What else? False accusers. False accusers, go ahead. Incontinence. Can't control themselves, Reed. Fierce. Fierce. Go ahead. Despisers of those that are good. Despisers of those that are good. Those that actually keep the commandments. Read. Traitors. Heady. High-minded. This is a big one. All of them are big, but this one is a big one right here. Lovers of pleasure. More than lovers of the most high God. Because a lot of us, we'll look at all the other ones that got spoken and we'll focus on those and be like, yep, that, it show is. It show, people show is like that. And then we look at this one and we hear it and we kind of just let that one kind of, you know, <laughs> roll off of us like, 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 you know, water, a uh, drop of water off of a duck's feathers. Right? But that last one, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. How much do you really love the most high? Hmm. How much do you really love God? The almighty God. <laughs> the God of Israel. Oftentimes we default to do things that are more pleasurable for us. That are easier for us. 
more than probably what we imagine to the point where how excellent really is our sacrifice when we really look at things and we really examine ourselves how excellent is our sacrifice really whatever it is that you do for the most high because in the bootleg church they have you thinking that you're serving God and you can't even begin to even speak upon how you're serving him here at least you get you're getting somewhat of an understanding okay this is what it feels like to serve the most high. Right. Okay, that means in order to serve something, that means what? To attend to it, to be, to be involved. One, there has to be something to offer up in order to serve. There has to be something to offer up. What are you offering up? And if everything is convenient for you, that's even more of a question. What are you offering up? The little that you are offering up, how much of a sacrifice is it really? Because one, th one thing about it, is service really service if it's very convenient for you? <laughs> the thing about service oftentimes that we appreciate, you know, we appreciate going to a restaurant, being served and waited on. The person that's serving or the person that's waiting, is it a convenience for them? They get paid because it's an inconvenience for them. They're doing something that you would rather not have to do yourself. You'd rather not have to go and wait and for the food and, and prepare it a certain type of way. And you, you, you pay for that service. Even, it's even customary that you'll go as far as to go and give an additional tip to whatever it is that you pay outright for the food and the service to begin with, right? Something to think about. Um... Go ahead. Yeah, give me verse 5. Verse 5. Having a form of godliness. Having a form of godliness. You look like you look the part. <laughs> See, Israelites, we done found out who we are. Some of us now, we start looking the part. You look like an Israelite woman and an Israelite man. You got your beard. See you from a distance. Saw you walking across the street and I saw the hair wrapped. So, saw the dress, might have even seen the fringes. Now, okay. But is it just a form of godliness? Or are you really godly? Go ahead. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. But denying the power thereof. From what? From such, turn away. Turn away. In other words, it's telling you, beware. There is that out in this world. <laughs> it's a lot more of that than what you would probably be comfortable accepting. A lot of us, we want to feel, I say it all the time, we want to feel like, oh, we done gotten into this truth. I'm going to give every Israel like the benefit of the doubt. We all, eh, all of us ain't rolling in the spirit of the most high. All of us are not really trying to exemplify or are exemplifying the fruits of the spirit. All right? So just with that being said, mind you, <laughs> go real quick. Go to uh, Jeremiah 51. Some things I want to get into. Jeremiah chapter 51. Start at verse 1. The book of Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will raise up against Babylon. Hold on. What, according to the Bible, a lot of us know this by now. Where we happen to live, this country, you know the actual name of this country, but what does the Bible call this country? Is, is, is not this place called, what, what, didn't they know that back in the 60s, that this was Babylon? They were saying it back in the 60s that this was Babylon. So it's not a secret. It's been known for quite some time. Read it one more time, please. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me. A destroying wind. And against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me. A what? It says a destroying wind. A destroying wind. Read. And will send unto Babylon fanners. What? And will send unto Babylon fanners. Mm, let's figure out what these fanners are. Read. That shall fan her. Shall fan. Go ahead. And shall empty her land. Uh -huh. For in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. So what happens when you get a spark and you fan it? Feeds it more oxygen. So what, what is the Bible trying to give you a hint on what's going to happen in this place? 
There's reasons why we, we kind of spoke about it. I'm going to speak about it in detail next week, most I willing. But remember Putin, he opening the vaults, even though he, he full of doo-doo too, because he's going to act like he just found this out. Like, oh, yeah, come on now. We've been showing Russian icon pages for how long, how many years? Been knowing that they had images of our people, and, and they, they don't just have them in Russia. That's the crazy thing about it. Like, it's just, oh, we didn't know. Forgive us. Okay. Y'all want to play that game? It's just wartime between them. This is to let you know for them to out that and be like, hey, look, by the way, that's for them to say, okay, we don't want the U.S. to be a united front. That's fine with us because we're not anyway, right? But that's to create problems in this land. That's to create some unrest here. The thing you got to understand, situation, Iran just bombed. Israel and they made threats. They said anybody that gets involved, guess who just got involved? Okay. So it's okay. It's okay if you're really rolling with the most high. But one thing that we got to understand, be mindful being in this place. There's opportunity with things because you have, this is the, a place of confusion as the Bible calls it. That's what Babylon means. You got all these different nations. Some of y'all love it. Oh, I just love all the nations. Oh, all of God's children. You got all of these nations here, and they don't mind kicking up dust and fanning stuff. So ain't no telling what may happen. Just be mindful. You know, I know a lot of us, we want to enjoy the American dream and spend a whole lot of time going and living our life and having fun and being in public spaces. You might not want to be in these public spaces because they're they're, they're giving warnings. People from other countries are warning their people that are living in this place to say, hey, things may pop off. Just be mindful. So fair warning, right? Uh, all praises. Let's go into it because it's another very important topic that I've been touching on that I really want to go into because now, believe it or not, some people will believe that I'm, what I'm getting ready to go into. Like, oh, it's not time. Why would he go into that? Why would he talk? About? Because it's that much more important to understand this in a time like this. Second Samuel chapter 23 and verse three. The book of Second Samuel 23 and verse three. Second Samuel chapter 23 and verse three. The God of Israel said. Who? The God of Israel Who? said. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Buddha said. The power of Israel said. Okay, the God of Israel. How many of y'all actually serve the God of Israel in here? Okay, all praises. All right, let's see what he said. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just. Must be what? Must be just. The word just means what? You got to be righteous. You got you to gotta do things according to the law. Go ahead and read all praise be to the Heavenly Father. Love you too. Go ahead. Ruling in the fear of the Most ruling High. Ruling in what? Ruling in the fear of the Most High. In other words, ruling in the fear of the Most High, meaning ruling according to this law, according to what the Most High has laid down. All right? That's, that's whoever, whoever, whoever that you allow to be a leader, or your leader, I should say, you better make sure you're choosing leaders that are just, that are really living by this word. You understand? This is a time more than any other time that you want to make sure that you're choosing leaders and, and that you understand what that looks like. And we're going to talk about that today. You, 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 don't, you don't want to be out here just following any and everybody because you're going to really need some leadership in this time. Go ahead. Verse 4. And he shall be as the I, light. I don't even need 4. Appreciate that. Go to First Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter four and start at verse one. The book of First Peter chapter four, verse one. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, uh -huh. arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Hold on, we gotta we gotta examine this right here. Read that one more time, please. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh. Hold on. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. What did Christ go through that we at least read about? 
What did he go through in the flesh? I, I like that you said those things because the first thing that people would say that he got pierced, he got crucified. I like what you said because the things that he went through mentally mm -hmm. and spiritually having to deal with the type of people that he was dealing with and all of the things that was being said and done against him, that more than likely was way worse than some of the physical things that he had to endure. Con. And it lasted longer. Con. Con. Go ahead, read that one more time. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Hold on. Arm yourselves what? With the same mind. Because we're always mind. talking about being armed. You got this. You got that. I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you armed with that same mind? What kind of mindset do you have? Are you ready for the onslaught? <laughs> that is the question. And the Bible tells you, don't just arm yourself with any kind of mind and think you got it. Because remember what Peter said. Peter was like, oh. how was shy? was like, no, you ain't ready yet, Peter. You will be ready, but you ain't ready yet. And as a matter of fact, Peter, I don't want you to have to go through this. I need you to be safe. I need y'all to pray that the most high don't put you through this. Y'all stand on the side. Let me go through what I, got, I need to go through. You got to understand that, right? And what kind of love was that from a general to say, you know what? I'm going to go through this alone. I need y'all good so that y'all can lead the nation. How much love do you have for your people to say, goodness? But the mindset, a lot of times, see, here's the thing. A lot of people in the truth, as we call it, right? The reason why there ends up being a problem and they end up, if they're part of a body, they leave and all these things. A lot of times, it has to do with whatever it is that they're going through. They go, oh, I'm just, just going through so much. I just, I just, you know, I'm trying to work some things out or, what it, you know, all that type of stuff. Yahweh Shah didn't back out. It wasn't no backing out. It wasn't an option for him. It wasn't an option. Some of y'all, you hear one thing and you ready, oh, I just, I'm ready to leave. I'm so offended. Imagine how many things that he, he heard and was said, because the Bible documents a whole lot of it. Then it tells you there's so much more that it, it couldn't document because there was so much, this is in the bridge version. To have the same mind that he had, you do understand what that means to some degree, do you? You need to be likewise <laughs> arm and, and the words, the word play, arm yourselves. <laughs> likewise with the same mind. Because if you don't have that mind, you don't stand a chance is what it's telling you. Go ahead and read. It says, for as much then as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased, has ceased from sin. He that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Read. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. See, that's the thing. One of the reasons why we go through the things that we go through that beat us up and have us feeling like, oh, I don't know if I can make it. There's a process that you got to go through to physically put you through to a point where you make a decision to say, you know what, whatever happens to me, it's okay. Spiritually, I know that this is what I must do. I got to keep moving. I got to keep pressing towards the mark. I can't stop. And all of that other stuff that I'm going through, it's all right. The most high, it'll, it'll figure out itself the most high got me. But this is something that I got to do. I got to do this work. I got to walk this walk, and, I, and there is no option to stop. Go ahead and read. Uh, it says, for the time past, excuse me, for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Now, this is heavy right here. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Read. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. I'm going to tell you what it's saying. What the Bible is conveying to you in this scripture right here, it's saying, remember when you was in the world and the foolishness that you didn't have 
you didn't have to be a part of, but that you ran to because you felt like you had to. Some of us, we was running the streets and you just had to, you felt like you had to go and hit that lick. You had to go and do that dirt or whatever it is that you was involved in. You had to go the same mindset that you had and you did the nonsense that you did. <laughs> go ahead and read. Who shall, give a, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? The quick meaning the alive, the alive and the dead. Read. You skipped verse 4? No, I think he read it. No, I read it. You read want it. to read it again? Go ahead and read it. Verse 4, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of now they think Now they think you strange because you ain't running to the party. You ain't running to the foolishness and the nonsense. You ain't running to the turn up. You ain't running to the violence. You ain't running to the to the debauchery. You're not running to, 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 to the orgies. You ain't running to all the nonsense that you ran to. Now they're looking at you like you a weirdo. Mm -hmm. And tripping because you running, you running to the school. You running to the body. You running to jump under tents during tabernacles. You running to get your unleavened bread. Come on now. Now they're looking at you like you crazy. Go ahead and read. Speaking evil of you, uh -huh. who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, mm -hmm. that they might be judged according to the men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Ooh, heavy. Go ahead and read. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And this, above, this, hold on, this is what you need to be on now. This is the mindset that you need to be in right now. You better get, get out of the world and whatever their expectations of you are. Forget about that. You got to be locked in. Now is the time where it's time to be locked in. And it's not time to, to be half-stepping, to be one foot in, one foot out, to be lukewarm. It's not time for that. It's time to be all in is what it's telling you. Read. And above all things... Have fervent charity among yourselves. For and charity. above all things, have fervent love. And the reason why when we hear charity, we don't think love, but we think about what we give. Because love is actually what you do, what you give, your action. He said, and above all, have fervent charity. This is the time to lock in, to love your people. Love those that you're building bonds with, the ones that are like-minded, the ones that are going above and beyond and try to be righteous and keep these commandments. That's what you need to give yourself to. Go ahead and read. For charity shall cover your, excuse me, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. What you're able to do, often, a lot of the things that, that we've done, you don't have, you don't deserve a second chance. It's only by the grace of the Most High that you're here to get another chance. You don't deserve a second chance. He said now what, what you can do now, you can get locked in with your people, and the way, the way you, you offer up something worthy to be offered up is the charity, the love that you have for your people. He told you in the book of Luke, he said, look, those of y'all that go above and beyond and go and uh, visit me in prison, go and blah, blah, they was like, Christ, when have you ever been in prison? When have you ever, like, you haven't been in these situations. What are you talking about? He was like, well, if you do it for my people, then it's like you've done it for me. So he was giving you an understanding of exactly what it was. You trying to figure out how to make it, how to get up out of here? He's giving you the gameplay right here. He's saying, look, that charity, fervent charity, it, that's why when people be like, oh, I found out I'm an Israelite. Now I'm a state of myself. That's not scriptural. This is what we're supposed to be doing. He said, forsaking not the assembling of yourselves. It's work we got to do. Not only that, we're going to need each other. We pre we're preparing to get up out of here. We're going to need each other. Go ahead and read. Verse 8. Uh, well, verse 9. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Use ho look, 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 Man, who, who, who preaching this word right here? All oh, praise be to the Heavenly Father. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. You know what hospitality is, right? It's simple. What well, hospitality got to do with the word? They got everything to do with this word. All y'all do is get together. There's a reason why he got us getting together. It's a reason why weekly you got a Sabbath. And on that Sabbath, 
by law, he said there's got to be a holy convocation, meaning a holy assembly come together. Not only are we going to come and rest and eat and get in this word together, he said, I want y'all to laugh and have fun, build bonds. He, he telling you that for a reason. He said, you're going to be more inclined to fight for one another. You're going you to need to have a fighting spirit, and you're going to need to have some fighters around you because it's going to get tough. Ain't no other way to break it to you. It's going to get tough. You're going to need somebody. Go ahead. Verse 10, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. Minister means to what? Serve. Serve. Whatever gift that you've been given, he's telling you, whatever your gift is, bring it. That's what you're going to serve the people with. Uh, we be having these conversations a lot, don't we? <laughs> it's right here in the word. Whatever your gift is, serve the people with it. You got a gift for whatever. What, what, what is your gift? You got a gift for making money? Help your people out. Serve your people with that. You got a gift for uh, counseling? Then may, maybe you need to help and be a counselor amongst your people. Whatever your gift is, he's requiring that from us. You know, that's the thing that we got to understand. We got to be like, like one thing that the other, we don't, we, we haven't been students well enough of the other nations. The other nations, we like every opportunity with every gift we got, we need to squeeze every cent that we can out of each other. And the other nations don't operate like that. They don't squeeze everything out of their own people. They, they do what they need to do to build their people collectively and they understand we're going to squeeze everybody else. <laughs> They squeeze you dry. They don't squeeze themselves. They're not stingy amongst themselves because they understand we become empowered as a people when all of us are doing well, when we are not struggling. Amongst us, we've learned some, some bad things, bad behaviors. We're okay with just one of us being good. I want my pockets. I'm good. And then we be complaining. Man, ain't nothing but broke Israelites. Ain't nothing but broke niggas around me. What are you doing to help them not be broke? The people that call themselves by your names, the Jews, they make sure that they ain't broke collectively. <laughs> Who do you think they got that from? <laughs> they got that from your ancestors once upon a time when we had that sense before we got destroyed. Money ain't nothing but a tool. and we People, we fall into the love of money and glorifying money and people that got it Money ain't, it ain't hard to get. It's an easy thing. The most I say, it's an easy thing for me to make a poor man rich. It's nothing. <laughs> Boy, most high the part of the, 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 the sea right in front of Israel and then swallowed their enemies up and they were still doubting. Most high done delivered you how, out of how many situations where you didn't know how in the world you was going to pay your bills or how you was going to feed your family. How many times he done parted the sea for you and you still don't believe? You still doubt? You're going to need that faith in this time when the bombs start dropping. So you better, you better, you better exercise your faith. Start, start lifting. <laughs> you don't want to be caught weak and you don't want to be caught lacking. Go ahead and read. Verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Uh -huh. If any man minister, let him do it as as of the ability which God giveth. The oracles of God is talking about this book right here. Whatever a man speak, it should be of this book. Don't let somebody come to you and get this, give you this wild dream or vision that they got and, they, and it does not coincide with what this Bible teaches. You know it's off. And if you don't know, you better get with somebody that can tell you, that can show you and say, nah, that don't align with scripture because whoop de whoop -de this, this, and that. Okay, I see, are all praises. But there's too many people out here that's ready to sell you a dream, literally. Mm -hmm. And that is dangerous. Go ahead and read. That God in all things may be glorified through Yahweh Shai, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. All oh, praises. Go ahead. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. You're going to go through trials and tribulations. You're going to go through strokes. You're going to go through heart attacks. You're going to go through deaths. You're going to go through brokenness. 
You're going to go through all kinds of stuff. You're going to suffer losses. You're going to suffer poverty. You're going to go through things. So quit talking about since I came in this truth, it's been hard. It was easier when I was. Stop talking. Stop talking that foolishness. That's what our people were saying coming up out of Egypt. Yeah. Nah, that's, that's why if we're going to be broke, let's be broke together only for a limited time. We got to learn how to band together and love one another. Time out for the foolishness, man. I was, every moment I get, man, let me come and be amongst my people. All oh, praise be to the Heavenly Father. Why? Because it's life here. I got, I, got brothers, I got brothers and sisters that exhort me, that, that, are, that are give me encouraging words, that uplift me, that I can talk to, that I can laugh with. That's, what this, that's what's going to maintain you. Go ahead and read. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the, concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Mm -hmm. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. You see that? And some of us, man, we, we want to pick and choose, you know what I'm saying, the afflictions that we go through. We okay. We get to a point, I have to check myself on that. You be okay suffering, suffering um, atro atrocities at the, or suffering wrong at the hands of, of Esau. You be all right with that to a degree. And you be like, yeah, you know, you kind of feel justified. Boy, but let you suffer some wrong at the hands of your own people. God forbid they call themselves Israelites and they in the truth, as we say. And they got fringes. Oh, man, you feel like the world is about to be over with. You can't take it. How many Edomites was giving you how a shy problem? It, it tell you a story. It give you a play-by-play. -play. Who was the people that was giving them all the hell? <laughs> I had a person I was arguing with, somebody I've been knowing for a long time. And he didn't want to hear none of the truth. All he kept saying was, well, uh, 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 the Israelites, they didn't even, they rejected Christ. They rejected him. That don't change nothing. <laughs> that don't change a doggone thing. He came to die for them. them same ones. Ooh we? But we got to accept it is what it is. Our own people. You're going to get it from your own people. They're going to give it to you the worst. They're going to make life the hardest for you. How many of y'all have been on the job and it's your own people that give you the most problems? They make it the hardest for you. You done been pulled over by the police and, and the police that, that look like you, the ones that give you the hardest time. It be like that sometimes. It is what it is. <laughs> it ain't nothing new, though. It ain't nothing new. Go ahead and read. And it reads, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this you know, behalf. You know what that means as a Christian? Let me, let me, let me clear that up, because some people will run with that. I suffer as a Christian, as a real Christian. Not as the, what they call themselves today. These people that call themselves Christians today, that's not a real Christian. The Christian movement was created literally by Israelites who followed, who understood, that began to understand and accept the prophecy and understand that Christ, who actually physically walked this earth and really gave that sacrifice, was crucified on behalf of us. <laughs> and literally, <clears throat> those were the Christians, those that actually not only understood, began to understand the law and came back to the laws, but also took on the understanding that Christ was giving them because he was like, who can teach better than me? I'm going down. Send me down. That was a part of him coming and walking this earth. He said, I need to make sure that I personally cultivate men and your leaders, and I'm going to leave you with them. So what you got after Christ from the apostles on and what they were teaching was nothing that was different. And that's another thing that I'll go into soon, most high willing. 
understanding what the difference between the old and the new covenant is, where we're at, what covenant are we in, exactly how that works. We'll be talking about that soon, most I willing. But understanding that Christ didn't change anything in, in regards to like, oh, all, all of a sudden it's a whole new covenant. No, it was the same covenant. The Bible tells you that. There was only a few tweaks, right? Understand this. Him telling them, because that's a lot of times, a lot of us, we don't move. Christian means a follower of Christ. We don't follow Christ's example. In this day and age, man, we call out the wrong people. We, we want to check and call out the wrong people, but we won't call out the people that Christ was calling out. He, he, he'd call out a devil in a minute. <laughs> Your feelings be hurt. You'd be cut. And he was really about that. Think about it. How, how, old was he, how old was this man when he started his ministry? And at what age did he, did, he, did he give his life? He was quite a young man. Fair, fairly young. A lot of us, we still, we, 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 we got grades now. We still trying to feel like we need to live our life. All right. <laughs> How many times did he get to go and do what he wanted to do on the weekend? He gave all of that up for you and for me. Come on. He said, as long as you suffer as a Christian, meaning as a real follower of Christ, really moving according to this word, hospitality is in there. They'll throw hospitality out the window like that ain't a big deal. That's a very big deal. You got a whole lot of people that call themselves leaders in Israel, and they are the least hospitable. They want you to wait on them hand and foot. That ain't what this Bible say. This Bible tells you the more of a leader you become, you become the greatest of servants. It's more that's required of you. What kind of spirit are you really walking in? A whole lot of folks, they, they ain't walking in Christ's spirit. They say they ain't the truth, but they ain't walking in Christ's spirit. That's why he tell you, he said, don't suffer as a murderer. Don't be doing none of that foolishness. Don't be a thief. Don't be extorting your people. Don't be an evildoer. Don't be a busybody and everybody business. Got the tea. He said, nah. He said, but I'd rather you suffer as somebody, you know, people talking bad about you, but you actually doing the right thing. You really about your people. You really go above and beyond for your people. Then it's okay. You suffer for that. Don't feel no type of way about that. Go ahead. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first be begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? -wee. He said, go ahead and get yours. Get it out the way. Trust me. It's good like that. You don't want yours on the back end. You don't want that back end judgment. <laughs> you don't want to catch what the heathen got to catch. And the other nations got coming to them. You don't want none of that. He said, just get yours out the way. Move on to the side. Get, come on up here with me. Get out the way. <laughs> you don't want what I got. He said, you don't want, to, want the indignation that I got for them. He said, you don't, you don't want that cup. Go ahead and read. So to stop feeling some type of way that you're getting your judgments out the way. Go ahead. Take your broke days. Take your ang little anguish that you're going through and be happy about that. Glory in it. Like Paul said, glory in it. Go ahead. We ought to be throwing a party because we so broke sometimes. We ain't going to be broke forever. We ain't going to be broke forever. It ain't, it, in the world, it wasn't. A lot of y'all, how many of y'all, raise your hand if you knew how to get money in the world. It wasn't rocket science, was it? Just quit tripping that you broke a little. You going to get money? We going to get money. We the most high people. You going to get money. And the one thing we got to learn, one of the reasons why you ain't got a lot of money is the most high waiting for you to learn group economics. You ain't learned group economics yet. You ain't even tried to learn group economics yet. Basic group economics. Most of us, we ain't learned a doggone thing in any part of school that we was in about no economics. Because <laughs> the person that was teaching it probably didn't know anything about economics. <laughs> they weren't economically inclined even. <laughs> Simple stuff that we learning and it's okay. It's all right. Go ahead, read. It says, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? <laughs> Go ahead, read. 
Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him and well doing. Just do well. Keep on it. Stay on, in other words, stay on the path. Stop worrying about certain things. Stay on the path. Go ahead and read. As unto a faithful creator. The, the creator been faithful. Be a, be a faithful creature. Con. Go from there. Go to the book of 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter two and verse nineteen. <laughs> First John chapter two and verse nineteen. God. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Oh, we gotta talk about it. They went out from us, but they were not of us. You gotta stop as Israelites, and this is this is I'm gonna be stern today. You gotta quit thinking that everybody that has been through this way wearing fringes was of us. That ain't how it worked. It's not. Read it one more time, please. They went out from us, but they were not of us. They were not of us. That's the reason why they ain't still here. Go ahead. For if they had been of us. If they had been of us, go ahead. They would no doubt have continued with us. Uh-huh. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. <laughs> Bible is, the Bible is solid, man. It's solid, and it just it teaches you the things that sometimes you just struggle with. Oh, I just oh, they weren't the reason why they're not here still with you. Sometimes you got to look at things in simplicity. There's no reason if we say we're doing the same thing and we're the same family and we're on the same mission. There's no reason for us to be apart, especially if we even go further and all our beliefs align, which they should. Shouldn't be having a situation where you got a body of people of believers that believe different stuff. Where's the leadership? Now you got people, oh, I don't really trust the leaders. I got my own understanding. And whoa, oh no. Then you shouldn't be allowing them to lead you. That means you need to be a leader. And if you love them and you're already tied into them, then that would mean that you need to do what you need to do to be able to bring forth strong reasoning and be able to defend the gospel. And help those people that you say you love. There'd be a whole lot of people that ain't willing to sacrifice for the people, but they got a suggestion and they got, oh, well, I see things differently. Oh, do you? Let's talk about it. Let's open up the scriptures. Well, you know, it ain't. Get out of here. <laughs> Keep on skipping along. And what I don't want you to do, somebody going to be mad at me saying this. I don't care how mad you get, but I'm going to be honest with you. And don't spread that. Don't don't try to talk about we left on good terms. Ain't you ain't leave on no good terms. Cause you shouldn't have left in the first place. What was the reason for you leaving? Why am I, why am I gonna leave? Why why would I leave? Why am I leaving? Unless there's unrighteousness. And if that there has been unrighteousness, then the alarm needs to be blown, and we need to deal with that. And there needs to be judgment. There needs to be trial and judgment. Because why in the world if I say I love y'all? But then I find out that there's corruption here at the top. And then I just leave. <laughs> what kind of love do I have for y'all? Allowing y'all to just continue to be led astray. And like you said, Bishop, we already have an example from Christ. He went right to the people that was in charge of, you know, making the, the nation be what it was at that point in time. Christ went to the rulers and to the leaders. Ain't no way in the world I should be able to convince you that I love you and I'm going to leave you in the street and don't tell you nothing as the Mack truck get ready to splatter you off the face of this earth. How in the world can I convince you that I love you? Who, who, who's going to buy that? Some of y'all will buy it, huh? Raise your hand if you buy that. <laughs> For me, you say you love me, show me, man, help me, pull me out. <laughs> and it shouldn't be no underhanded stuff. It should be, look, this is what it is. This is what's going on. Mm -hmm. All right, well, prove it to me. Okay, this is how I'm going to prove it. This is bottom line. And I'm not telling you something that I haven't done myself as well as others with me. Am I lying? Nope. I'm talking about, like, for real, for real. We had a pretty big situation with this, this organization. And it wasn't too, too many years ago. And it's right on there on record for you. For you to check out. If you're going to be a part of this organization, it's only fair that you check it out. 
It ain't no, oh, that ain't my business. You, you need to know what you're working with. Are these righteous men that I'm dealing with? Or are they, are they power hungry? What am I dealing with? Because it's that time. You ain't got no, why in the world would you, would you allow your soul to be played with? Why would you continue to spend time and invest yourself and your family in something that's leading you astray? That's, that's one of the reasons why I resent every time I see somebody that try to pull that same thing. Oh, we leaving on good terms. What you mean? It ain't no good. To you. What, what you're really telling me, because I've seen it happen over and over, is I want to still be able to talk. I want to talk to them and to spread whatever I want to spread. I want to be able to still get information. I want to know what's going on. I want to have an inside man or two. If you don't, if you don't want to be a part of this, then clean break. Go and, and us, we got to understand, we got to be careful because what we do, we don't understand that we allow ourselves to be vessels of Satan. You give Satan an end. Oh, yeah, I'm cool. I want to be good with everybody. This person, they gone. I want to be good. Yeah, you give Satan an end because all he needs to do, and you might think in your head, you don't know. You don't know enough about what's going on sometimes, so you don't know what kind of information you're giving up. And you don't know what somebody may think about somebody else. Go ahead. It's war. And a lot of times we don't look at it as spiritual war because we're not necessarily dealing with certain aspects of it, so we miss it. That's why it's important for me to tell it to you. I know this ain't the most you know, upbeat message, but it's important because in a time like this, this could be the difference between life and death for some of us at some point soon. You got to understand what it is. Let me ask you a question. You got real armies in this world, right? What army operates in the way that a lot of Israelites want to operate in? What would happen if they operated like that? And it's probably, is it more than likely going to be the death of this country anyway? <laughs> that's, that's, the crazy, that's the ironic thing about it. <laughs> because they got them all here, they want to talk about with every nation. Okay, every nation. You see, it, you see how they start kicking up dust when certain issues, like this whole situation between Israel and, um, well, even before Iran, uh, well, yeah, with Palestine and Israel. And what kind of divide that created, and and what kind of uh, uh, reactions that you got here in the states? Y'all forgot that quick. People are pretty passionate. You think all, all of a the sudden they're not passionate anymore? Absolutely, yeah. Other Israelites got into it over the situation about about those things. But check this out. Understand wh wh how things really work. You got to be careful who you give and what you give access to. It's not about just, oh, no, well, I don't have no problems. Well, I don't know. That was between them. Nah. Something happened the way countries work. Something happened. <laughs> it ain't no that's between my leader and your leader. Nah. It's all of a sudden that you see you. Is it, is it still between just the leaders now? <laughs> so you have to be mindful of that. That's not what we want. But you have to be cognizant. You have to be mindful that that's the reality of war. People, people, <laughs> people not going to play by your rules and what's comfortable for you in war. It's not going to happen. Go ahead and read that one more time, please. 19. They were not from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, and they might be made, Salakia, but they went out, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. And that's real simple, but a lot of us, some of us, we like, what that mean? No doubt have continued with us, but, listen up, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us, meaning what? That's what should make it apparent, the fact that they left, that, they not, that they're not of us. That's, 
and 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 looking at it to, to simplify it, if you're really in this walk and you're striving, or even you're in this body because you see, you're looking at the spirit and you're like, as far as I can see and everything that I've been trying to prove these people and they really are trying to live according to this word. And when I have a question, I'm asking and, and they've been able to give answer. All right, I see this is what it is. And then all of a sudden you get somebody that's totally disgruntled and they're not willing to tell you or not able to say, this is what I have against these people. These people are wrong in these ways. But it's just like, nah, nah, I'm just, oh, I'm in my feelings, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, they dip. They shows you what it is. Whatever it is, they're not bearing witness with the same spirit. So now it's for you, if you feel like you need to, go and prove their spirit. See what they're really on. See if they're really moving according to this word. Oftentimes, what you find is they're not. And you be like, okay. So now you got a choice. How important is their friendship to you? Is it more important than maintaining righteousness and supporting the righteous cause and defending righteous friends, people, and bonds that you have? Like, you got to make that decision. Mm -hmm. Now I want to do both. Then now it's a problem. You're an accessory. Make sense or not? Tell me if, I'm, if it don't make sense, tell me. Now you become an accessory. Like if I know somebody's trying to kill you, right? And I'm like, oh, I know they really, I, I, I know there's an attempt that's been made on your life. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you shall come through. Uh, yeah, so-and-so over here. How you going to feel about that? <laughs> what you going to feel about that? I'll throw you something else. Oh, yeah, 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 don't worry, don't come. Don't worry, I got your wife and your kid over here, but so-and-so coming through too. You still... What are you going to think? Why? If somebody is if somebody is is inclined to harm you whether it be physically and sometimes the scripture tells you them words cut way more than the sword. Words do more damage a lot of times. Words will get you touched by somebody else. Something that somebody else says can make somebody else want to touch you or end your life. How many people have died? How many loved ones do we have that got killed because it was something that somebody else said? Kind of. I know it's more hands than that. If you don't know directly, you know somebody that knows somebody. If you grew up in the hood, you know somebody, I guarantee you, because of something that somebody said. So we're not, it's not a game. It's not a game. And we have to be mindful of that. Go from there. Go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and let's start at uh, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 9. The book of Second Corinthians. And in a, in a time like this, one of the main reasons I'm bringing this out, in a time like this, that's the last thing that you want to think about, have to think about. Somebody within is going to get you caught kind up. Of, it's going to be the end of you. You trying to safeguard yourself and the people that you love and defend that. The last thing that you want to worry about, we, we don't all rush into the safe room, the safe house, to be protected. And then you find out the enemy is in the safe house. <laughs> How's that going to make you feel? Like, well, what's the use of being in here? We running from them for each other. Don't make sense. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 9 through 21. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 9, and it reads, And when I was present with you and wanted... I was chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. And in all things I have kept myself from being burdened. You know why he did that? And it's sad because that still happened in Israel. You start, you, you kind of gauge the people. You be like, this, these, this church, they ain't as charitable. They ain't as giving. They ain't they going to have a problem. They see me asking for money. They going to think I'm trying to get something from them. But it, 
here in Macedonia, they already know what it is. These are my brothers, they actually got me. All right, this is what I need, and I actually need this. I'm going to deal with this body, and they need some help, blah, blah, blah. Oh, sure, put in, oh, we're going to help. That's what happened. And he said, I, I made sure I did that, so I'm not chargeable to y'all. Because, see, I, I get in a situation, you feel like you done pay, paid for something. Now you feel like you're in control and you deserve pardon for certain nonsense that you're doing or want to do. Israel act like that sometimes, and that's a wicked mindset. But go ahead. And in all things, I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. He said, I kept myself from being burdensome to you. <laughs> Go ahead. As the tr truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, the Most High God knoweth. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion. That wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. Listen to what he say, read. For such are false apostles. He says a whole lot of false apostles out here. Quit thinking everybody that, 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 that's, you know, know what they're talking about. They got a couple of precepts. They speak well. They're pretty eloquent. That they righteous. Oh, you see the way that brother teach? That's a righteous brother. No. Don't work like that. Uh, that's why the scriptures say I say it all the time Be ye continually with what? With the godly man Whom thou what? Whom thou knowest You know that they do what? You ought to be able to see my lifestyle It ain't just about how, how well I teach But it's a whole lot of people It's a whole lot of Israelites that will con you Quick Go ahead <laughs> They'll con you and con you <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. You see that? Transforming themselves into. So when you got leaders that's really, if they, you see that they really walk in the walk and then, they, and then they end up giving you warning about somebody that you don't know, you just gonna watch a couple of videos on. But then they're telling you, beware, and you might want to take, take heed. And if nothing else, really give diligent inquisition, as the Bible says. Don't just, no, no, they just, they couldn't be. No, so-and-so, no. Yeah, you a hater. I don't know. I think you just hate. You ain't feel. I'm not getting paid. <laughs> if I'm, I'm going to give you my, I'm going to try my best to give you my honest, not opinion, but my honest observations to try to, Help you in the best way I can help you. And now, if I say something, I try to be careful with what I say. You might want to look into it. That's the way. And I, and I expect the same from you. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of to light. An angel of light, boy. Satan. We underestimate Satan so much in the truth. Oh, no, no, Satan be, boy, Satan be sitting up there dancing in your face. He be, and that ain't Satan. He funny, look at, ha, like, man, I love, I love him. I can't, ooh, ooh. My spirit be filled, Dylan. Ooh, Satan be up there. He be doing the Martin on you. He be, he be like, I got to. <laughs> Satan be having a field day, boy. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. And he's going to look like he with a whole righteous crew. <laughs> no, they no, ain't no way in the world. Ain't. No, okay. I don't know what scriptures I'll be reading, but okay. Go ahead and read. Whose end shall be according to their works. I say again, let no man think me a fool. If otherwise, yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. And what he's saying, what he's going to go into, he's saying, man, it ain't like I don't win because I'm going to look like a fool if I sit up here and try to be like, no, no, you think they righteous? No, nah, look, look at me. <laughs> you don't win. <laughs> I just seen that happen. I done had that, like, man, so-and-so, they such a dynamic teacher, man. Oh, my God, the spirit. And I'll be like, I'm thinking. I'll be like, all right. <laughs> now, say it's. 
And you know, he, I look like a dummy sitting up here. Well, what about me? Right. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> this is what he was saying. Go ahead and read. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly, in this confidence of boasting. <laughs> he said, I'm not speaking this as of the, uh, uh, after the Lord, but as it were foolishly, <laughs> in this confidence of boasting. In other words, he's saying that's foolishness. I'm going to look like a fool, and I'll become a fool sitting up there trying to convince you. It's not my job to sit up here and convince you. It's my job to sit up here and teach this word according to what the Bible says, according to the true doctrine. I ain't here to convince you. The Bible does say get the love of the congregation, but there's a way to do that. But it's not my job, and I'm, I'm going to look like a fool if I'm sitting up here trying to convince you. That's why I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not doing that. Read. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning And hey, you know what he's saying right there? <laughs> In other words, he's saying you'll let people do all kind of stuff to you and you'll suffer that. You'll be okay with that. But then when, if, if somebody who really is exemplifying righteousness and they right in front of your face trying to show you better, you like, nah, you, you doubt, you like, nah, I can't be. But you'll let folks do you dirty and be like, oh, no, they, you know, you give them every kind of pass in the world. Go ahead. I speak as concerning reproach as though we had been weak. How be it, wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I speak foolishly. Go ahead. I am bold also. I am bold also. <laughs> Go from there. Go to the book of Matthew, chapter 23 and 15. I think Darius brought this one out recently. Pray the most high bring him home safely. He home all praises. Matthew 23 and 15. Verse 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Uh, watch this. Go ahead. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. Why? For ye come past sea and land uh -huh. to make one proselyte. You go, you man, you be traveling everywhere to go get, you know, get, you, be, you be going to get them. You be getting followers, getting members. Yeah, on every level. Some of them be, they be doing their thing online. Some of them will travel wherever. But watch what it say. Go ahead. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Yeah, we ain't talking about just Gino. I'm talking about in, within the community. Supposedly, you know, saving souls and get up under you and whew, they be a mess. Be a mess. Yep, seven, six, seven spirits more wickeder. Yep. But this is what the Bible is saying. This is not me saying this. Go to John, St. John chapter 10. These are the things that we, we, we conveniently sometimes throw out. You can't throw these things out. You got you to gotta deal with this stuff just like you deal with all that other stuff. John chapter 10, verse 25 through 27. That's what we're going to deal with first. John chapter 10, verse 25, and it reads, Yahweh shall I answer them, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. So they bear witness of me. Read. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. This is something I had to I had to reckon with. I don't care what you do. Sometimes people just ain't gonna believe you. People got an evil suspicion of you. This I want. He just a talker. He just he just he just he just talk. It be nothing but talk. You, know, you always, you know, they feel some type of way, especially if you're cutting them. I, I don't prepare my lesson every week like uh, so and so and so and so. I'm gonna cut today with the scriptures. I don't do that. <laughs> but you'd be surprised. Some people feel like you go in week after week. You got them in mind personally, and you prepare a lesson to try to get on them and cut them. And, and, and I don't know. Because my thing is, if 
if you're not guilty of whatever it is you're getting cut by, you wouldn't be cut. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a complex right there. Like I'm preparing my, our, all of these people and I'm preparing lessons exclusively for you weekly to, to, to get on you. I don't even see, I ain't seen you and God knows when. I, I sit up there and buy some milk and put it in the refrigerator and, and somebody be them put, put that milk at the back of the refrigerator, I'll be them forgot the milk there. And, but, but every week, I ain't seen you and I don't know how long, and every week, I specifically go and I'm, I'm going to do a lesson on so-and-so. I'm going to cut them. <laughs> and then I'm cutting you with some stuff that's totally untrue. Sheesh. Yeah, some of this stuff you probably think, I'm like, it probably sounds funny to y'all. Y'all laughing. But I promise you, <laughs> I kid you not. I kid you not. But the thing is, it says my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Yeah. You know, and it's crazy because y'all are not my sheep. You're my people. Now, in terms of who you belong to, you belong to the Heavenly Father. Yeah. Now, but what he does do, he does have shepherds. I've been made a shepherd. You know what a shepherd is, right? A shepherd is the same as pastor. A shepherd does what? Watches over, guards, and tends to, and feeds sheep that belong to somebody else. Right? So now, sometimes sheep don't belong there. Let them go. You tripping all and he wasn't one of ours. Yeah, I was shot tell you right here, they don't hear me because they ain't my sheep. They don't resonate with the message here because they ain't they ain't of the same spirit. Let them go and find their spirit wherever they're gonna be good at. Go ahead and read. Oh, you wanted was twenty seven, right? Uh twenty eight too. Verse twenty eight. Uh-huh. And I give unto them. You know what? I, I didn't need 20. I, didn't, I just needed 25 through 27. You read that, huh? The water. Jump up real quick. Go to uh, verse 10. Let's read 10 through 17. St. John chapter 10, verse 10. Now, now listen up. You want to find out what a, what a good leader looks like? Pay attention. Go ahead. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. A good shepherd to give their life for the sheep. Oh, praise. They'll give their life for the sheep. Ain't that what Yahweh Shah did? He gave his life for the sheep. A good shepherd willing to work themselves to the bone on your behalf. They'll go the extra mile for you. That's what a good shepherd is going to do. You want to know, you trying to figure out who's good leaders out here? Just This, this is what the criteria. Go ahead. But he that is in hireling and not the shepherd, who's the, who's, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. See, so the first thing you got to understand is this. If you got a shepherd... And they, they telling you don't it like basically it's all kumbaya, it ain't no wolves. Well scripture is telling you right here that there's still wolves out there, then then are they are they looking out for your best interest? No. Some of them they, they tell they they tell they sheep about certain wolves, but they don't let it be known who those wolves are. <laughs> they don't be talking about wolves, they be warning they they be warning they sheep to stay away from the people that actually want to do good by them. And they, because they sitting up there with the sheep clothing and they the wolf themselves. They the ravening wolves that the Bible talk about. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Verse 13, the hiring, the hireling fleeth because he is in hireling and careth not for the sheep. He's doing it only for the money and for the benefits, for the clout, for the prestige. They ain't gonna sit there and put they put they self on the line. They gonna throw a sh throw throw, a, throw uh, somebody that they feel is dispendable in front. Hey, you take care of that. They not gonna deal with that themselves. They not gonna put themselves in harm's way. 
for the sheep. Go ahead. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. That's the key. I know my sheep and I'm known of my sheep. Go ahead. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father. Know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. They say it again. I lay down my life for the sheep. Go ahead. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice. And they shall be one fold and one shepherd. Go ahead. Therefore doeth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. That's, that's heavy right there. Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. Meaning what? A good leader, I'm a, listen to what I'm saying, and then you can read this again for yourself. A good leader understands they don't have a problem laying down their life here, whatever that looks like. Sometimes that looks like, hey, I could be making way more bread. I could be doing X, Y, and Z. I could be working this job. I could be doing this. But knowing that it's going to take away from this ministry and doing what I need to do, I'm not, I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to compromise that. Therefore, that's me laying my life down. They're, they're willing to lay their life down because they understand that kingdom is coming. And that's the life that really matters. When you got leaders and they're going to look out for self before they look out for anybody else, to the point where you know it's it costs you know the the the, the peak. That's a problem. That's that's not the mark of a good leader. What do Yahweh Shai do for for his people? <laughs> what kind of lifestyle did he li did he live? He was working as a carpenter. He 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 had he had the skills. His father's business, and you got to remember who who his father was. His father came from a lineage of kings. I, I don't know if all of y'all know that. If, if the kings had continued on, then his father would have been rightfully one of the kings of Judah, and even beyond that would have been king of all of Israel because he was the rightful heir. You, did y'all know that? So this wasn't, this was somebody that was known, even though at that time the, uh, uh, um, the, um, the scepter was not with the family at that time. Obviously, they were in a situation where they were occupied by Rome. But you think people didn't know who, who what family he came from? They knew who Joseph was. Pretty sure Yahweh Shah could have he could have done well for himself. <laughs> he could have been a stepper. He could have been a money maker, right? But it talks about him. It says. He wasn't a looker, neither was he out here trying to look fresh. He was, he was like, look, I'm about to work. I'm about, I'm about my father's business. I know what, I, I got a job to do. I know exactly what I got to do. I got to prepare these leaders. And he wasn't this big dude. He was a small dude from what the records say. Because they would have you to believe that they don't have records of what he, what he looked like. On the contrary. <laughs> Some things that we got to think about that we got to take into account. Because a lot of times, boy, man, you looking for these leaders. What happened when, uh, when, they, when they was looking for the next king of Israel and they, they overlooked David? It was like, uh. <laughs> yeah. In our mind, we've been watching too many Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt movies. And now lately, you've been looking at too much, uh, what's his name, uh, Idris yeah, Idris Elba and all of these cats, you think you need to look a certain way. Oh, this, is, this is what Christ would look like. Uh, you'd be surprised. If you seen Christ down the street at the liquor store, you'd be surprised. <laughs> you probably wouldn't think in a million years that this is him. There's a record, because they would have you to believe that there is no record. There's a record that says, and it's, 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 it's through a... a I found this record way back when through a Russian source. Said he was short. They even have an image that someone painted way back and it goes along to cooperate the story. He didn't have no full, beautiful, luscious beard. <laughs> yeah, 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 one of them Anthony Hamilton beards. <laughs> 
and he had a unibrow, according to the source, and he had this long face, he was short, a tight afro. Something to think about. Something to think about. Gotta be careful. He wasn't on Instagram. Trying to trying to land him another one. He wasn't, he wasn't doing all of that. Go ahead. Yeah, when he come back. <laughs> but when he walked that time, when he walked on this earth, according to the records that I've seen, and even the prophecy, remember the prophecy of him coming that's already passed, said that, talked about that he, would, he, he wouldn't be comely, like there was no comeliness. He wasn't this, what you would deem to be attractive looking guy. But it talked about him in his glory standing on Mount Zion giving out crowns, him being taller than everybody else. Yeah, so when you see him the next time, he ain't gonna, gonna quite look the same. He's gonna, he gonna have an upgrade. Some of y'all, y'all gotta be, y'all to be happy to know like you get a chance of getting an upgrade anyway. This, yeah, this. This this ain't, this ain't supposed to be the final destination right here. Yeah, we got a lot to look forward to. We got to act like we do sometimes. Let's finish this off. Go ahead. Was that all of that? Uh, let's get. Um, you read it all the way to seventeen. Go to First Peter chapter five. Uh, yeah, we should be able to. Yep. First Peter chapter five. Start at verse 2. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, and verse 2. Listen up. Feed the flock of God Do which what? is among you. Do what? Feed the flock of God which is among you. Go ahead. Taking the oversight thereof. Go ahead. Not by constraint, uh -huh. but willingly. Not by constraint, because somebody making you got you at gunpoint. Nah, because that's what you want to do. You willingly. I, I'm, I'm with it. Go ahead. Not for filthy lucre. Not for the money. Go ahead. But of a ready mind. Of a ready mind. Read. Neither as being lords over God's heritage. And just because you you the leader, you the teacher, that don't mean you're supposed to lord over the people. Right. Sitting up there talking to people like, you know what I'm saying, crazy. Like, you, hey, you get, get up. You don't do that. That's not according to the scripture. So when you see that in Israel, that's not how things are supposed to be. Raise your hand if you've seen that in Israel. That's not how things are supposed to be according to this Bible. That's why we don't roll in that spirit. All praise. Br brothers have left in the past because we don't roll like that. Like, they, like a, a divine leader, God had told me to tell that nigga to get right here right now. It don't work like that. It's not righteous. That's not what he called for. Go ahead. But being examples to the flock. But being examples to the flock. So it ain't about just what you're saying and all that rah-rah. It's about like, am I really practicing what I'm teaching? Do I really move in humility? How can I tell you to be humble and you ain't never seen me be humble? How can, how can I expect hospitality from you and you don't never see me give any hospitality? How, how, do, how can I expect you to be helpful and I don't never give you no help? You don't see me being helpful. How can I expect charity from you and you don't see no charity from me? What, 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 what would that call? Because the children watch. I, they, they watching everything. When you talk about correcting somebody but they see you don't like to be corrected, raise your hand, children, if you see that. They watching everything. You know, raise your hand if you know what a hypocrite is. <laughs> don't lie. Put your hand up. Don't play. No, no, no. It's, no, no it's, it's some tension now. They don't know what I'm about to say next, but they think of <laughs> now. How many of y'all have seen adults that you that you said in your mind, you said, man, they're a hypocrite? Raise your hand. Yeah, I ain't gonna make you name no names. <laughs> Raise them high. Raise the man's high. 
Don't think the kids ain't watching. Kids know, and they'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> Some hypocrites around here. Well, I ain't going to say nothing else, because then folks will fall out. It'll be a whole bunch of whoopings on the horizon tonight. <laughs> Punishments. <laughs> <laughs> Spell it. <laughs> people are watching. So if the kids watching, you know what? Other adults watching. People have people have t taken their assessment of you. Stop thinking people. I don't know. Some of y'all walk up in here and you act like you. They nobody see you. <laughs> Everybody sees you. They know you. Know that they watching you, and it's cool, cause we ought to be be able to be able to give good account for each other. And, oh yeah, that's my guy. That's my oh, that's my sis. We got to make sure we're not being hypocrites in the eyes of the people, in the eyes of the children, and just for ourselves. We don't. Who wants to be a hypocrite? Nobody, I don't think, wants to be a hypocrite. Go ahead and read. Yep, yep. Verse 4. Yeah, verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you so shall. The chief shepherd is other shepherds. A lot of us, we're called to be shepherds at times, leaders. But the chief shepherd is Yahweh Shai. Read. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. See that? Read. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. In due time. Go ahead. Casting all your care upon him. For That's he the thing. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of the Most High, that he may exalt you in due time. Some of us, man, we want to be exalted tomorrow. All right, come on. Man, go ahead and read. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And that's the thing that a lot of people underestimate. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That's what our people underestimate too often. That Satan is on the prowl. Mm -hmm. you, you swear like Satan can't jump in nobody near you. He can't jump in you. He can't jump in nobody near you. No, that brother, no, nah, that was cool. What happened? No, not that. Man, I'm, man, I'm about to go kick it with him right now. <laughs> <laughs> You underestimate Satan, man. Satan can jump in. Trust me. I got some examples for you. And we underestimate that. And Satan be happy. He be like, man, this is too easy. <laughs> this is too easy. Go ahead, read. Whom resisteth, uh, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Mm -hmm, same. See, the thing is, just take, in the, how, how you leave the world and you have more common sense in the world on how to move and how things work, you done gotten this truth and you just then lost your sense. Like all of a sudden, you just became just, your brains became mush. Like, like all of a sudden, all the rules changed because now you wearing fringes. <laughs> in regards to treachery and deceit. <laughs> You understood how many how many movies have you watched? <laughs> you sit up there trying to pattern yourself after these gangsters and stuff, and all of a sudden you get in the truth. <laughs> and all, all that, all none of that, none of that is relevant no more. They practice it when it's convenient. <laughs> Go ahead and read. It says, I, and we just said it in the past, and I don't know, some of y'all might not like it. Like you're a part of a righteous, a righteous mafia, and blood in, blood out. They tell you in Exodus, it said, whether you liked it or not, your forefathers made a blood covenant with the Father. Uh -huh. Don't it say that? Uh -huh. I ain't, I ain't making it up. 
You, you in regardless, even before you accept it. All right, I'm going to get in the truth. He said, I, you didn't choose me. I chose you. <laughs> Boy, that's a cold line. <laughs> you, was all, you was born. You ever seen somebody? Some of y'all might even have some, you know, y'all might even know somebody. You might have been that person. You was born in gang life. Your parents was banging. You like, that's what it was. Real talk, right? You was born in this, whether you like it or not, whether you say you accept it or not. You blood in, blood out. You was born in this. <laughs> Literally. So you already know what it is. So quit quit taking Satan like 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 all of a sudden you out of the danger zone now. You really in the danger zone now. Cause now now you ain't working for Satan. Satan trying to do everything he can to stop you. Especially if you was any if you was anything significant in the world, he know how much of a danger you can be in righteousness. So he gunning for you. <laughs> if you was an influencer and a game changer in the world, he definitely don't want you to, to gain some traction in this truth. He don't want you to bat for the for the good side and do some great things. He's aiming for you. Quit thinking it's all good. Satan wants you. I'm going to show you. Go ahead. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Yahweh Shai, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. <laughs> you see that? Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. A lot of us, man, now you done gotten the truth, and you done, your spirit has gotten settled. You start keeping some laws. You, things start making sense. You get more established in your manhood and your womanhood. Go ahead. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. Go Jump from there uh, real quick. Go to Luke 22. Watch this. <laughs> Luke 22, and I'm on verse 1 through 3. Yeah, give me Luke first and then. Then somebody give me John 22 next. The book of Luke, chapter 22 and verse 1. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, Man. which is called the Passover. Still in that time. Go ahead. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot. Then he entered who? Entered into Judas. Entered Satan. Oh, excuse me. Then entered Satan into Judas. Surnamed Iscariot. Surnamed Iscariot. Go ahead. Being of the number of the twelve. And as far as Iscariot, I looked into that like, what does that actually mean? Because that was his surname. And it has to do with the city. It's a city boy. <laughs> you see that city life, that fast life. Go ahead. All right, uh, real quick. We hold that. We're gonna get back there. Go to John twenty-two, real quick. Uh, ooh, it might be twenty-one, and I want Salakia. Let me see. Give me one sec. Yes, sir. Oh, praise be to the Heavenly Father. That's what I got to do. Try to pay my debts. All oh, praises, bless. All oh, praises. Just want to do right. 13. I'm sorry, Salakia. 13. John chapter 13. Uh, 21, yep. The book of St. John, chapter 13, and verse 21, and it reads, <clears throat> When Yahweh hath thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. One of y'all going to betray me. Go ahead. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. 
Now there was leaning on Yahawashai's bosom one of his disciples, whom Yahawashai loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of him whom, whom he spake. He then, lying on Yahawashai's breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? Yahawashai answered, He it is, to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop and gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, and after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Yahawashai, After the sop, what happened? Satan entered into him. Satan entered into him. Mm. <laughs> then what? Then said Yahawashai unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. He said, Whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. Mm. Watch this. Read. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake thus unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Yahawashai had said unto him, by those things that we have no need of, excuse me, by those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So they thought he, he left so that he could go get something with money. They didn't understand. And uh, go ahead, verse, uh, verse 30. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Who is, who is Yahweh speaking to? Do you think he was speaking to Judas or Satan? <laughs> he was speaking to Satan, and Satan understood exactly what he, he and he, he got up out of there. A lot of times you're dealing with people, and you ain't even, you know, the pe person ain't really in control like you think. Satan, you you sitting up here thinking you dealing with that person and you dealing with Satan. Satan is in is in control. <laughs> yeah, he gonna, he come on, come on. But remember them spirits. You remember he said, "Yeah, I was shy. I know. Paul, I know." <laughs> remember that. Go back to Luke chapter twenty two. 22, let's get uh, 31 and 32. Yes, sir. Verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. So now, now he's talking straight to Peter, who he loved, who ended up being the one that he chose to be the leader. And he telling him, he said, you, you about to be the leader, but Satan really wants you. He wants you bad. He desires to have you. So I don't know what y'all understand, but understand that. Go ahead. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Yahweh said, I prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. That you, that you don't all of a sudden get knocked off your mark. <laughs> Fall out of the faith. All of a sudden, for whatever reason, find reason to not be devoted anymore. That's ain't that that don't that don't move you. <laughs> but I, now now Peter became the leader of Israel after that, <laughs> and he was letting it be known to him. He said, "Look, Satan trying to get you specifically. He really, really wants you." So you got to understand this because there's a scripture that says if, 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 if they can knock off the shepherd, then the sheep will be scattered. Satan knows that. Satan, like, why would I waste my time trying to get anybody else? I want the leaders more than anybody else. So you sitting up here, you get a leader to buy the quickest. Oh, they, they good, they good. You better knock it off. You'd be quicker to hear something. You better know what kind of spiritual warfare we're dealing with <laughs> and what's at stake. Go from there. Yeah. Absolutely. But a lot of times we underestimate. Go from there. Go to Job chapter 2. Finish that in verse 32 though first. I'm sorry. Verse 32. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. When you converted to what? When Peter is converted to what? When Peter becomes the leader. He said, I, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Then it's going to be your chance. Now it's your, um, your job to strengthen the other brothers and create more leaders up under you. 
the same way I built you up, you're going to have to build up others in the same way. Shh. Go to Job. Job chapter 2. Chapter 2. Start at verse 1. Verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves yeah. before the Lord. Him? Who was with them? See, you take a day off. Satan don't. <laughs> Satan ain't taking no days off. He been on his job thousands of years with not a day off. <laughs> Can you afford? <laughs> Go ahead. He loved what he do. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. You you'd have probably been late to that meeting. Satan was right there. <laughs> They having spiritual counsels. You sitting up here playing Satan for a joke. He right there. What's up? What's happening? So where you come from? Oh man, I've been roaming all throughout the earth doing my job, doing what I do. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse two. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth. And from walking up and down in it. And a whole lot of y'all feel like this is the last place Satan to be. Satan be sitting amongst us right now. He wasn't he wasn't he sitting amongst to be able to jump in and, and mind you, he got he got workers working for him. <laughs> he, he he made a person he made a personal uh, uh appearance, jumped into Judas. And as soon as he left, Yahweh Shah said, Hey, let me tell you something, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Satan just left a body <laughs> But he really won't you He got Judas but he really won't you Boy 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 Go ahead Verse 3 And the Lord said unto Satan Has thou considered my servant Job look at, look at what the conversation is like Have you considered Job Most high the same way you would brag on some Like if you got some prize dogs Or you got some, some cars Or you got some kids We like to brag on our kids my kid, man, this one right here, man, he he's strong. <laughs> yeah, he's like this one right here, Job. He ain't, this one he different. Go ahead, go, what's Satan say to him? Go ahead. That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth Yahweh and eschewth evil, and still. He holdeth fast his integrity. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. Yeah, all that a man hath will, will he give for his life. <laughs> Go ahead. But put forth thou hand, thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh. And he will curse thee to thy face. Israelites still doing that right now. It's a whole bunch of Israelites. Let them get a pimple that's too hard to pop. And they ready to give up. <laughs> I can't do this. Good. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him, and he took him a posture to scrape himself with all. And he said, so, You know, if you break a pot and you got a piece of that pot, it's sharp, yeah, and he took that and started scraping the boils off of him. Go ahead. And he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, now watch, watch what his wife say. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Don't that sound familiar? In verse 3 it said, And he still, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. Then in verse 5 he said, He will curse thee to thy face. Who said that now? Satan. Who do you think jumped in his wife? Read verse 9 one more time. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? 
curse God Satan, and die. Satan will jump into your spouse. Satan will jump into you. Satan will jump into your child. Why are you playing? Like Satan. <laughs> and Israelites be convinced, no. Every man, it's all good. It's all love. Man. Are you willing to sign on that? Sign your life on that? Not me. Mm -mm, not at all. Go ahead. That was all I needed from that. Do verse 10. Verse 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Most high knew what he was working with. He was like, you don't know my creature more than I know my creature. I know, I know with this one. Number one, I'm in control. So I already know what he will and what he won't do. I know how I created him. I know it. I, you know, I created him. I know what he will and what he won't do, what he's going to do, how he's going to react. But you're dealing with Satan, and one thing that you got to understand, Satan will still take his chances. Are you sitting up here? You'd be like, man, Satan already know. I ain't going to do nothing. I'm a, Man, I'm going to keep these commandments no matter what. I'm, he's still going to try you. <laughs> Satan be like, let's see. He talking he talking to the most high. He the most high telling him this one, no matter what you do, he ain't and he's still like, Well, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Goodness, man. That's his job. He was created. He, he created to try you. Let me see. So why you sitting up here thinking like you ain't spiritually gotta get yourself right and you slacking on the workouts and <laughs> Satan just ready for you. Oh, this light work right here. I'ma light you up. I'ma run through you. I seen a video. I normally don't watch videos as much. But I was watching these shorts. And it was this one short. I guess it was this two big dudes. One of them must have been an uncle, and the other one looked like a nephew. And I guess the nephew he he, he had on his uh football <laughs> gear. You must have seen it too, huh? Yeah. I was like, man, I thought the nephew was going to do a little bit better than what he did. The dude looked like he didn't have no pads on. They laid down and got up. Class boy, he, he flatlined the nephew. As I say, ready to do you. He like, go ahead. He said, you want to get your armor on? Go put your armor on. <laughs> and you put on everything. You put on your pads, talking about this is what you do. Catch me on the gram. I'll be posting scriptures. I'm ready. You didn't put your helmet on. Ooh. <laughs> he said, you better put on the full armor. How many of y'all be putting on that full armor on every day? How many of y'all, you know that you be bypassing some of them things? You don't, you don't put on the full armor. You put on a few things. <laughs> Are you really ready? You ready? You ready for that head up? We'll say, that's, that's a good question. Are you really ready? You better ask yourself that question and, and be real with yourself. You better prepare yourself and act like you know. Sheesh. <laughs> Was that all of that? Yep. All right, that's all I needed on that. We'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 5. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter seven and verse five. You know it's crazy. A lot of times we just we don't do what we need to do to really get ready and to train for things and to get right for things and to build ourselves up. And we just hope during that time, whenever it happened, that we be ready magically. First Corinthians 7 and 5, instead of doing what we got to do to help each other get ready, we need to be every day treating it like, like it count. First Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 5. First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5. Defraud ye not one another, except it be, for, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and praying. Fasting and prayer, 
and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. 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 Now, you know what incontinency uh, is, right? It's a lack of self-control. Now, watch this. That Satan tempts you not for your incontinency, which means what? Satan always searching for your weakness. He trying to catch you slipping. It's just like the wilderness. And, and the animals, the scriptures tell you that the animals can teach you a lot. It said, pay attention to the grasshopper. Pay attention to the, to the ant. It tells you that Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Go watch the animal planet. Go watch, uh, uh, what's the, uh, Net, yeah, Net Geo. Them lions, they are looking for an easy kill. Yeah. And you sitting up, they going to wait till you weak. He wait right when you weak. Oh, yeah. Yep, it's on. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> waiting, waiting. Uh, he limping. That's the one. That's the mark. Uh, she feeling some kind of way. She in her feelings. I see. She got a little too. Go get her. Go get her. He in his feelings right now. He a little get him. Go get him. <laughs> Satan jump. Jay, boy, Satan probably be having fun. He be like, I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna jump in his wife. I'm gonna jump in him. She about to have a fit. I'm gonna jump in them kids. Kids get y'all. You ever one day your kids just acting up? You don't know what's going on. They just acting the fool. <laughs> you can't figure out what's going on. Why are they doing some of the stuff they do? <laughs> Satan be done jumped in your dogs. <laughs> I forgot. I know which movie you talking about. Hey, Nas, nice. what was that movie you put me on to? Fallen. 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 Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's what would be going. You, you didn't seen it out there? <laughs> yeah, y'all got to watch Fallen with Denzel. You touch they, the spirit scene, and it touch you and to you. Hollywood giving to... us a, a representation of what go on. Yeah, trying to kill him the whole time. And at the end, he jumped into the cat. <laughs> say, 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 looking for your cleaned out vessel. Uh, you, 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 you left the door open. Oh, the door open. We just got to walk in. He, he, he ain't trying to climb. He, he ain't trying to have to do nothing too much. He, he, he wants you to make it easy for him. So he waiting for you to make it easy on him. Make it easy for me to hot rod this. Jump inside of you. We're going to act a fool tonight. <laughs> Real talk. Go to uh, stay in 1 Corinthians. Get 11 and verse 10. I'm sorry, 1 and 10. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. The book of 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, Listen up. That ye all speak the same thing. We all should be speaking the same thing. Read. And that there be no divisions among no you. No divisions among you. Some people be like, oh, it's cool. We got some divisions. It's cool. No, it ain't. You should be working hard to be in a situation where you're absolutely unified that there are no divisions. Because it's important. Because... Well, there's a, a division, man. That's Satan. He waiting to get in the mix of that. Go ahead and read. But that you be perfectly joined together in, in the what? same mind. In the same mind and what else? In the same mind and in the same judgment. And in the same judgment. It's important. It's important. Because you don't give Satan no room to get in there. We're all on the same page. We're all saying the same thing. We're all on the same page. He ain't got no end, no schisms, nope, nope. Go from there, go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 16. The book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 16. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things. But condescend to men of low estate. You see that? 
Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be of the same mind one toward another. Read. Be not wise in your own conceits. Be not wise in your own conceits. Go ahead. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Go ahead. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Go ahead. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Live peaceably with all men. <laughs> But we should all be of the same mind. The scripture keeps saying the same thing over and over. That's why it's dangerous when you're thinking it's all good and somebody, oh, you know, oh, it's all good. We all, you better make sure you do your, do your diligence. Make sure. Don't just, it's not just a free-for-all. And people feel some type of way. No, nah, it's all Israel. We all supposed to come together. Yeah, we all supposed to come together in righteousness under one banner. But that's a process. You understand? And there are things to that. It's not a free-for-all. It's not a free-for-all to let people in your house, is it? Raise your hand if it's a free-for-all to let people in your house. You're not just going to let any and everybody come into your house because you understand the ramifications of that. A lot of y'all, you have children, you have people that you love, and you got just your overall peace of mind. If you don't have kids there, you got yourself there, and you know, or you got a loved one with you, and you like, I can't, I can't afford for somebody, somebody to come in here and destroy things, or you know, whatever the case may be. So the Bible tells you that it tells you be careful not, not to let just any spirits in your house that leave trains. You want to get that, get that for me? Yeah. Come, come. Now, mind you, the scripture also talks about being hospitable and actually, you know, letting people stay with you at times. But it's still wisdom in doing that, right? You don't just let any and everybody. Some of us got family members we love, but they'll take everything you <laughs> you got that, that's worth anything. Yeah, real talk. Where's that at? I got it. It says it's, uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 11 and verse 29. Bring not every man into thine house, but let deceitful give, 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 man. Give him a chance to get there. Ecclesiastes is what? 11? 11 and 29. Let's get that. 11 to 29. Bring not every man into thine house, for the deceitful man hath many trains. The deceitful man hath many trains. What does it mean, the deceitful man has many trains? It's a lot. It's a, it's a, when you see a train, a train carries cargo. You don't, you don't know what's in there. You, they ain't telling you what's in that cargo. And they come, <laughs> they coming through, and they got. You ever have a person that you trying to help, and next thing you know, it becomes something totally different. Yeah, they not necessarily forthright in telling you what it really is. Yeah, so you have to. That's why the Bible teaches us the things that it teaches us. What's that? Real talk. I just need you to take me down the street. I ended up it ain't, like yeah, they tell miles. you. Like, yeah. <laughs> down the street turned into 20 miles, he said. <laughs> it be like that. So just being mindful of that. In this time, man, we really have to understand what it looks like and what it means to really be on one accord, to have leadership and let leadership do their job. Let leadership lead. If you got questions, ask the questions that you got to ask, that you need to ask. Um, this is a time, man. We, we, uh, we got to prepare ourselves. We owe it to our children. Yes, indeed, man. All praise be to the Heavenly Father. All praises. Indeed.